Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Jared Poirier. Welcome to my movie review show, where I talk about movies. Hey! How's it going, homies? Good to see you guys all back on the Movie Nerd Review Show. And today we're talking about a really interesting movie that I watched recently called Dog Eat Dog. So let me just introduce this movie to you guys quick because not a lot of people have even heard about this movie. So this movie is directed by Paul Schreider and it stars my daddy, Nicolas Cage, as well as William Defoe, and an actor that I've honestly never heard of before named Christopher Matthew Cook. So this movie is directed by Paul Schrader, and this man has made a lot of films, but he's definitely most well known for his work with Scorsese. This is the guy who co-wrote classics such as Raging Bull and Taxi Driver. And this is where I have to be honest with you guys and let you know that I am pretty behind on my Scorsese films. I've seen Goodfellas, Casino, and Shutter Island, but i uh, pretty embarrassed to say that I actually haven't seen Taxi Driver or Raging Bull or Wolf of Wall Street, although all of these movies are on my to-see list, I assure you guys. So going into this movie here, uh, I didn't know a whole lot about this director. I've actually never seen any of the films that he directed. I've seen a lot of the films that he had a hand in writing. Obviously, William Dafoe, I've seen a bunch of his acting. Uh, he hands it up in the Spider-Man movies, but I love those movies anyway. And Nicolas Cage, I mean, Nicolas Cage is my daddy. Uh, I love every film that Nicolas Cage is in. I even sat through all of Left Behind. All right, so if you guys have watched my reviews in the past, you know how I approach reviewing films. Basically, I either organize my reviews by going category by category, or I talk about the good and then I talk about the bad. In this case, uh, I'm gonna take the category approach. And the first category that I wanna tackle here is the cinematography, because the cinematography in this movie is beautiful. There's a lot of really interesting environments in this movie, and there are scenes that are lit incredibly. I also thought that there's a lot more justification for these kind of crazily lit settings, much more so than in the movie Good Time. In that movie, there's a whole lot of extravagant lighting. Um, sometimes it makes sense, but other times it doesn't. But in this film, I mean, they're in strip clubs or kind of brightly lit streets and different areas where there would be pretty extravagant lighting. So I liked that that was actually justified and it didn't kind of feel forced. Another great thing about the cinematography in this film, the director uses some very, very interesting transitions and he has aspects within the frame that will guide the transition. So uh, one that I really enjoyed, where the three main protagonists here are all having breakfast in this hotel. We're led into the scene by basically focusing on a waitress and then she kind of moves out of frame and then we see our characters having a meeting. So yeah, I really respect it when directors take their time to craft good transitions uh, like Paul Schreider clearly did here. Another great thing about the cinematography here is the use of composition. So normally in a scene where you have two people talking to each other, uh, it will kind of be shot like this, uh, one person kind of near the center of the frame but maybe like push back a bit to either side, kind of talking here. Uh, what Paul Schrader chooses to do in this movie is that he has the uh, character sitting basically like this way towards the frame and talking in this direction. And yeah, that's just like a pretty weird way of staging it. Definitely different than a lot of directors do. There are parts in this movie where the director does a really good job of creating suspense by using like these really tight shots. And when you focus in on a character like really, really closely like this, it's uh, definitely Definitely helps to build suspense, definitely helps to put you in the mindset of that character, how they're feeling basically like locked into that situation. So before I go any further in this review, I just wanted to introduce these characters to you. So our main protagonist here is Troy, played by Nicolas Cage. He's the clear leader of our alliance of thieves here. Throughout this movie, Nicolas Cage tries to prevent a lot of violence. He tries to keep everybody alive. Unlike William Dafoe, he's not racist. And there are some parts where Nicolas Cage is meeting with his boss and he does kind of say some shit about his boys, but I got the sense that that was just his character kind of showing off to his superior. In this movie, we also have Mad Dog, played by William Dafoe. Uh, this is an excellent 
uh, captivating and pretty hilarious performance from Defoe here. He's all messed out, he's a drug addict, he's super crazy, uh, he kills a bunch of people. We also have Dee's played by Christopher Matthew Cook, an actor who I've never heard of before. Apparently he's on The Walking Dead or something. And although he doesn't have the star power as your Cage or your Defoe, I thought that this actor did a really good job in this movie. I thought that he gave a good performance. I thought that he actually had a surprising amount of depth. When I first saw this character, I mean, you're looking at Defoe and Cage and this guy who you've never heard of, you're like, oh, well, he's obviously gonna die first. And the movie actually subverted my expectations because he doesn't. So yeah, Dee's, I actually, out of all of these characters, I think that I empathized with him the most. Now I wanna talk a little bit about the story. And one thing that I really liked in this movie is the sense of progression. Our characters in this story are not happy with the position that they're in, and they're basically trying to actually get out of the crime game. But in in order to do that, they have to do progressively more intense and more risky crimes. And yeah, just the way that the story is driven forward here definitely kept me interested. Another quick thing related to the story, um, there is a little bit of use of monologue here. Our main protagonist is obviously Nicolas Cage in this movie, and uh, he has a few scenes where there's a bit of monologue. I didn't find monologue as annoying in this film as I have in other movies. I think it's just the way that the monologue is done here. One thing is that they don't start the monologue right at the beginning of the movie. Uh, they let a few scenes kind of show and not tell before they bring the monologue in. And yeah, the monologue is just used kind of sparingly, so it didn't really bother me here. And since we're talking about the story here, the next category I want to talk about is something that's pretty related to the story, and that would be the themes. So the main theme in this movie is definitely redemption. The first time that this comes up is with the character of Dee's. He meets this girl at the bar, and she comes up to his hotel room to hang out with him a bit, and he basically totally creeps her out, and she runs away. But we can definitely see that Dee's is trying to redeem himself here. He definitely just wants to have a normal life. He's done with all this crazy crime shit. With Nicolas Cage, well, it's really kind of throughout the entire movie that he's trying to establish himself as basically a moral actor. Uh, he's trying to get his buddies some money and he's trying to get them out of the crime game as well. And then the uh, most overt instance of this theme is obviously William Defoe. This character says up front to Dee's that he wants redemption, uh, that he's definitely committed some crimes, he's definitely committed some sins, but like our other characters here, at least uh, he's saying that he wants redemption and he wants to turn his life around. Uh, whether or not that's actually true, I don't know. Uh, whether or not he deserves redemption, he probably doesn't, and I found myself wondering during this movie, do any of these characters deserve redemption at all? Another thing that I definitely want to address is the racism in this movie. Uh, one thing that did kind of trouble me while I was watching this movie, I started to wonder, is this a racist film, honestly? There's a line where uh, Dee's says that hip-hop music has ruined all music for him. I guess that was because it's like all about crime and stuff like that, uh, which it's not. I don't know. I didn't really understand that scene. Uh, William Dafoe in this movie is a terrible racist. And Nicolas Cage's character, who in a weird way is kind of the moral center of this movie, he is definitely willing to justify Mad Dog. That's uh, William Dafoe's character, Mad Dog. He is definitely willing to justify his behavior, and that kind of troubled me. So another thing that I wanted to talk about is definitely the originality of this film. While I was watching this movie, I definitely started to wonder, uh, what is it about this movie that I'm liking so much, and what is it that sets this movie apart from so many other crime movies? Because I've seen a lot of these crime movies, and they all have a lot of similarities, uh, this movie just stood out to me as something that was pretty different. So here with Dog Eat Dog, what sets it apart really is the creative cinematography, the creative lighting, of course, that we've discussed at length, but also what moral rules these characters are willing to break and basically who these characters kill, who they rob, it's very different from a lot of other crime movies. When we're talking crime movies, a lot of time we're talking about that movie like Goodfellas or that movie like Casino. Scarface and Godfather obviously come to mind as well. In these movies, we essentially have gangsters killing other gangsters. Uh, in this movie, you have William Dafoe stabbing this fat chick to 
death in like the first five minutes of the movie. And right there I was like, man, this movie is going to be different. And this movie is definitely different. There's going to be a few spoilers in this review, I guess. I'm not going to try to spoil too much. Uh, but there's also a part in this movie where these guys kidnap a baby. So yeah, I just thought that this movie delivered some scenes and some experiences that you just aren't going to find in a lot of films. So yeah, just to sum everything up, this doggy dog movie is one that I definitely really enjoyed. I think that this director is incredibly talented. I thought that there was some excellent lighting, some excellent cinematography. I really liked the characters in this movie. I liked how they were developed. I liked the story a lot. I really liked the progression. The only thing that I couldn't really pin down with this movie, and this is probably why I think a lot of critics were a bit harsh on this film, I think a lot of that criticism has to do with the central theme of this movie. It's a bit hard to pin down what this movie is trying to say. I think it definitely has something to do with redemption, as I said earlier, and the idea of justice. And the last line that Nicolas Cage says in this movie, I think really establishes that. He says something like, what is justice? At the end of the day, I just wanted what I wanted. And I think that that line does kind of explain what this movie is trying to say. And I think that's why people might have a hard time identifying with this film, because ultimately it's saying that, no, maybe these characters don't deserve redemption. But yeah, that's the closest thing to a central theme that I could come up with here. But anyway, guys, I think that's about all I have to say on Dog Eat Dog. Definitely go check this film out. I think that it's a bit underrated. But yeah, that's going to be about it for this video, guys. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for coming out. Let's talk about movies.